I think they're holding out on us. Who are they? I don't know. Doesn't matter. But you know what? I've made just about every painting mistake possible. And today, I'm gonna share with you what I think are the most important tips I wish I would have known when I started painting. Hey again, friends. Say, my buddy Danny just sent me over some awesome files from his ongoing Kickstarter campaign. More on that later. And I saw this turtle folk druid and I had to have it. So I painted her up today and while I was doing that, I was thinking about when I first started painting, how much I enjoyed painting all my characters for D&D. I found myself thinking about all the mistakes I've made along the way and the tips that really helped me improve my painting over the years. So with no further ado, let's get on to the eight hot tips that I wish I would have known when I started painting. Tip number one, you do not need to use a ton of different paints on every model you paint. When I first started, I'd be using 25, 30 different paints in every single model. It just is not worth it. What you're doing is you're creating too many color distractions instead of focusing on those key parts of the model that you really wanna draw interest. If you're using a few colors, you can really control where you want the eye to go. Now, one tip that I do today to prevent myself from doing this is I just take the colors that are already on my palette and when I get to those fine details like belts and pouches and gun cases and sword holders, I just mix some colors that are already on my palette that I've used elsewhere on the model to create a different, slightly different variation. And then I use those. Tip number two gonna look worse before it looks better. Every single model has an ugly phase. That phase where you're working through the colors on a skin tone or an armor and it's not done yet. It really starts to look great in that last 10 to 15% of painting it. But in the meantime, it doesn't look good. And it's really hard to remind ourselves that we're not a bad painter. It doesn't mean we're doing it wrong just because it doesn't look good when I'm halfway through. Remember to keep powering through. Do not let that ugly phase take you down. Today's video is sponsored by The Lost Adventures, Volume 2, Into the Green Sea. And to be perfectly clear, this is more than just a 3D printable models Kickstarter. It's a collection of premium 3D printed miniatures, terrain, and RPG content made specifically for this set of 3D printed models, making it easier than ever to use what you print with minimal planning required. Of course, you'll get beautifully crafted and entirely unique 3D printable models, but you'll also get themed terrain, buildings, lore, encounter hooks, D&D 5e stat blocks, NPC information cards, and printable highly detailed maps. That was so much stuff I blacked out there for a moment for lack of oxygen to my brain. The glorious turtle folk that I'm painting in this video is actually from this Kickstarter. And I have to admit, I really appreciate how beautifully the models are pre-supported, as well as the crisp attention to detail. Whether you're a D&D player like me, or just want some amazing looking terrain for your gaming table, or you wanna paint some amazing looking model with tons of character, I suggest you check out the link below. What you get for your hobby dollar with Lost Adventures Volume 2 is kind of ridiculous. A big thank you to Danny and the whole team at Lost Adventures for not only creating a Kickstarter that I am legitimately pumped for, but also for supporting the channel. All right, let's get back to those tips. Tip number three. Multiple thin coats is not just for base coating. Now, acrylic paints are naturally fairly translucent. And what that means is that our paint needs to build up over multiple layers or one very thick layer in order to really and completely erase the colors that are underneath it. But when we're painting with wet paint and we put it on, our eye says, ah, yes, I see that lighter green. And so that means I don't need to add more layers of that green for it to come through. But when that paint dries, it dulls back down and shows some of the coat underneath and we don't get 
our true vibrant colors that we're trying to work with. This is a tip that while I was painting our turtle folks skin here, I really wanted to put into practice. I wanted to build up every new boost of color over the skin to create more vibrancy and to catch your eye. So in order to do that, I was doing three coats, four coats, sometimes five coats each time that I worked up and create a brighter color. Tip number four, push your contrast farther than you're comfortable with. Look, the number one piece of feedback that miniature painters get on how to improve their painting is to increase the contrast. That means we bring our highlights brighter and our shadows lower. When you get to a point where you think, yeah, they see some highlights and some shadows here, what I want you to do is to do it again one, two, or three more times boost it brighter and brighter and brighter and darker and darker. This doesn't mean just add more white to the highlights and more black to the shadows. Work with natural dark colors to create interest as well. But really, if you want to get good, the number one thing I'd recommend you do is really work on your contrast. Tip number five, brush control is a skill that will improve over time. Okay, let's unpack this one for a second. Most times in miniature painting, where we're often drawn to and where people usually tell us how we're gonna get better is by learning new techniques. Learning how to paint non-metallic metal as a technique. Learning how to get better with glazes as a technique. And those things are important, but we don't talk about often enough is the actual technical aspect of having that tiny little brush do what your brain wants it to do. And that takes time to improve, but we need to be proactive in understanding how that works. Be attentive, pay close attention to where you want to put that paint, where you want that stroke to end, and see how accurate you are. If you're paying attention to this process, you'll focus on it and you'll get better quicker while doing it. But just know, just because you can't paint that eyeball perfectly or freehand a beautiful banner today does not mean you never will be able to. It's just something that improves the more miniatures you paint. Quick break in the action for what I think is some exciting news. I've decided to launch my Patreon campaign. I wanted to make sure that I offered rewards that are valuable to you. Um, so I've really put a lot of thought into what I'm offering there. I will have a link below to my Patreon that you can check out all the cool things that I'm offering, including a weekly behind the scenes vlog where I discuss everything uh, from what's on my painting desk to some crazy weird story that happened to be in my life that week. So I encourage you to check that out. Join our Discord by becoming a Patreon member and we can chat any day of the week. Thank you for your support and all your help in this channel growing as much as it already has. Tip number six, use a bigger brush. Look, I'm not saying we don't use a tiny detail brush to dot those eyes and, and smaller details by all means, but by and large, the majority of the work that we can do on miniature painting can be done with a bigger brush. Why would you say is important to use a bigger brush, John? Good question. Why I say use a bigger brush is a couple of reasons. First of all, the bigger brush has a bigger belly. And by belly, I mean more of an area that it can hold paint, meaning you're spending more time painting a surface of a model and less time going back and forth to your palette to fill that tiny little brush's belly. A bigger brush can also help you cover more square footage on the miniature in a given pass. This means that you're not scratching at the miniature eight to 12 times with a tiny brush just to cover one section of a cloak or a shield. 
And when you're doing that, the paint is drying so fast that there's a good chance you're gonna tear up some not fully dried pigments on the model. With a big brush, with one big swoop, you can go in and paint a lot more of the model a lot quicker. Oh, one more thing about a big brush. A big brush is great for mini painting techniques where you're blending directly on the surface of the model. Things like wet blending. If you've got a bigger brush with a bigger belly, you can just cover a lot more area and mix the paint naturally on the model. Where a small brush, you're just kind of scratching around in it and you don't get a smooth blend. Tip number seven, you do not need to have a bunch of fancy equipment to start miniature painting or to get better at miniature painting. Look, I'll be the first to admit, I buy all sorts of weird gadgets and gizmos to try to improve my miniature painting. Some things have helped, some things are completely useless. But at the end of the day, when I think about what has really helped make me become a better painter, it's not the equipment, it's not the fancy gadgets, it's just spending time and understanding how our paint works with our model. The more time we focus on that and less time we get distracted and overwhelmed by all the stuff that's out there for us to buy, the better we're gonna get. Oh, I almost forgot, I got these sweet new shirts. I have a link in the description below if you want to support the channel, you can do so while strutting around town in this sexy shirt, or you can give a great Christmas gift to a mini painter in your life. And finally, tip number eight. Do not wait until you're good enough before you start painting any particular model. Look, I think this is a common one and I found myself doing this as well. I'm in love with this model. I think it's amazing, but I'm not gonna be good enough to do it justice now. Forget all that. If it's a model you like, if it's in a model that excites you, you're gonna put more of yourself into it. You're gonna try a little bit harder. You're gonna push yourself a little bit more. And you know what? Those are the models that help us improve. Those are the models that'll make us get better. And the good news is, they keep making awesome sculpts all the time. There will always be a new model that you love or you're excited to paint. So don't build up that shelf of shame of things you're waiting to get better before you paint. I hope you like the turtle folk. I think this druid looks super cool. I'm really happy. I think I might be tempted to start a turtle folk druid in my next D&D campaign. Can you even be a turtle folk in D&D? I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyway. That's it. Those are my eight tips that I wish somebody would have told me when I first started miniature painting. Now I know those aren't all the great important tips of our times, but they're ones that I just don't often hear and I need to remind myself of. If you have other tips that really have helped you and your journey, I encourage you to share them in the comment section below. I read every single comment and I will try something. If you say it's a good tip and it means a lot to you and I don't do it, I will try it. So we can all get better together in this journey to help slay the gray. If you like this video, you know what to do. Take care and I'll see you next time. cabbage looking manta ray thing. Manta cabbage. Manta cabbage. I mean, that's the real winner here. Manta cabbage. You turtle enough to be in the turtle club? Ah, oh, 
buckets.